Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, no. I don't wanna. I don't wanna see the crank. Oh my god. Hey guys, I'm Joel. Welcome back to a new video. I'm gonna get right into this one because I think it's gonna be a long one. We're gonna be rebuilding the engine for my E30. But it just so happened that my rings from CP have came yesterday. And then this morning, the machine shop called me and said that my engine was done. The block has been honed and the head has been decked. I decided to have the machine shop do the hone on the engine because I got brand new rings. I only really wanted to risk doing the hone on my own if I was gonna reuse the old rings. But then everywhere that I saw kept saying that if you're gonna do the hone, you might as well should just get new rings. And I'm like, you're right. Let me just get the new rings. And I also realized that the bearings that I have are M54 B30 bearings, but they work for M52 cranks. So I'm gonna have new rings and bearings. I just need to measure the tolerances of everything and make sure that everything is gonna work. A quick look at the head. This is an M52 head. All I had done to it was just getting the deck done and I'd lapped all the valves on my own. But now is the reassembly time. Here I have the block back from the machine shop. It's ready to get rebuilt. The machine shop recommended to come in with some soapy water, wipe all the cylinders down to make sure that they're completely clean and that the rags come back nice and clean. He said that their machine that they use to clean it, since they use it every day to clean multiple dirty engines, it doesn't get as clean as you would want it to be before a rebuild, so you want to clean it very well before putting it together. And then after that, we can coat the whole cylinder walls in the braking oil rope there that I'm going to use. It has high zinc, which is a good thing for freshly rebuilt cylinders. So once that's done, then we can start gapping the rings. Here goes nothing. This feels so wrong doing this, but... Shoe shot. Hey! <laughs> so I got to have this come out clean. I'm gonna spray some air through now, make sure everything is clean, and then I'll wipe down the cylinder walls. I'm cleaning off all the mating surfaces where the bearings and the main caps sit so that everything is nice and uncontaminated. Here's a look at the cross hatching on my cylinder walls. There's some marking on the cylinders you can see right there. The machine shop says that they don't think it's a problem, so I'm gonna listen to them because last time I had a mark in my engine and they said that they didn't think it was a problem, it actually wasn't a problem, so I'm just gonna trust what they said and run it anyways because I don't have another choice, honestly. If I wanna run this setup, I gotta run it in this engine. But there is the other side. The home looks really good, but those marks are the only question mark, but I'm not worried about them, honestly. So now that I fully sprayed air through the bottom and top, everything's all nice and dry. Clean rags are coming out clean. Now I can put the braking oil on and start gapping these rings. Let me just... Ooh. Yeah, I could just actually... I didn't like that. This is how the piston rings come. This packaging is actually really nice. The rubber band holds them so that they don't fold over on each other inside the packaging. And that's the part number right there. So let's get these open. I gotta measure the ring gap now before even thinking about trying to gap them. Here we are, pretty basic. Doesn't really need much more, so, okay. There's an end right there very visible, and then there's another end right there very visible, so these are both up. I just wanna go down to about that being flush. Yep, flush both. So now let me try 16 thousandths, see if that fits. It doesn't! Damn, I'm gonna have to grind these a lot. <laughs> I want to make my ring gaps 21 thousandths on the first one. 13 thousandths fits. This is the second ring. I 
Let's try the 16 mil on this. 16 mil fits on the second ring. 18 mil fits. 19 mil fits. 23 thou is snug. And 24 thou does not fit. That's crazy. That's exactly where I want it to be. 23 thousandths. So good that I don't have to touch that second ring. I just finished gapping the cylinder one ring and I got the hang of it. So I have all the six rings right here. I got the first one opened up to 21 thousandths. It was 15 thousandths and it took me one hour to gap that ring down because I was going super carefully. Here's my setup. <laughs> I got the Dremel and the vise holding it nice and sturdy. I turn it on and then I take the ring and I rotate it into that and I only grind down one end of the ring. This is how I did it two years ago, so I'm doing it again this way because I didn't want to buy the ring gapping tool. You just gotta be very careful of a few things. Let's get into it. So firstly, I'm just gonna drop the ring on in. This is the top ring of the second cylinder. And then from doing this ring, I learned that it has to really be perfectly level all the way around so that it doesn't read wrong on the feeler gauge. So all the way around, I'm making sure that it's super flush on both sides. And then I pick it up, make sure that these two are super flush as well. And now I know that I can trust the reading in there. So this one is 15 thousandths in my notepad. So let's see, 15 thousandths. I just want to measure it before gapping them. 15 went in like butter. Oh, 16 thousandths went in. See, so I'm getting it a different reading because I was more meticulous on keeping it perfectly level on both sides. Even the 17 went in. When in my notepad, I had 15 thousandths on that cylinder. Now the key here, since I'm freehanding it purely, I wanna make sure that one, the ring is perfectly down on this. And now I wanna make sure that every single time the ring touches the blade, it's always perfectly level. If you hit it at a little bit of a weird angle like that and take a corner out, it's gonna be very bad and it's gonna ruin the ring very quickly like that. So it's always very careful, barely tapping it. Now I'm trying to line it up perfectly right before tapping it. Just a few taps. Now, I'm only grinding one side and then coming in with this file between every Dremel just so there's no sharp edges that can score the cylinder walls. Now I can drop the ring back in and measure it out. This is a very time consuming job, but it's worth it in the end. I went a little low, so I'm gonna bring it up. There we go, 18 thousandths. Let's see what happens with this. It went in kind of forcefully, 19 thousandths. Ow, it keeps digging into my thumb. 19 thousandths went in, but forcefully. Let me see if 20 will fit. 20 will not fit, so I gotta give it a few more taps on the Dremel. taps. Twenty thousand still does not fit. I didn't do anything to the ring. The 19 still fits the exact same way. Twenty-one thousandths. 
Went in. Let's go. Ah, 22,000 fits, but very forced. So that's perfect. 21,000 it is. So now I'm going to repeat that process four more times and get this done. I just realized it took me 50 minutes to do the second ring. So <laughs> that's a good scale for you guys to how long this takes. First one took an hour, second one took 50 minutes, and it's probably gonna continue being that long. Finally, after like five or six hours, I'm done gapping these rings. I left the second rings exactly how they were. I just measured them very meticulously and I made sure that they were even all the way around, which I wasn't trying that hard to do it on these. And look at the difference of readings. So make sure you are very careful with how you measure them because it matters a lot as you can tell. Now I'm just coming in and spraying some air through all the journeys of the crank. Make sure that everything is all nice and clean. I'm gonna install these bearings and use some plastic gauge to see if they milled down onto the block or onto the crankshaft because I don't know any of the service history on either of those. So I'm hoping that it's all stock. Those are the main bearings. I do wanna clean them. There's like grease on them right now. I wanna make sure there's no oil on here because it's gonna affect the reading of the plastic gauge. So gotta be perfectly dry. And then there's a little notch on this side of the block. Line the bearing up with that notch. Drop it on in. So here you can see that notch right there. And the bearing also has a little notch on it. Just wanna make sure it sits nice and flat. Push down. And she's in. I almost forgot the thrust bearing goes here, not that one. This is the one that has to come in here. Hold on, is there a direction to this? For sure, the same notch. Damn, this one's harder. Ooh, good thing I didn't force it in because that was the other sides bearing. This is definitely the right one here. Ow! There it is though. <laughs> so there actually is a difference between the top and bottom one. The bottom one only has one notch and the top one has two notches. As you can see right here, these all have two notches. And that's a good thing actually. I see that the bottom one has the notch for the oil and all of the oil flow on the bottom. And then all of these ones are just bare. I was almost about to try and force this one on, but this one was for the top. <laughs> I'm wiping all the oil off of the journals so that I know there's nothing on the surface. There we go. I can ensure that that is fully dry now. This is the condition of the bearings that came out of the engine. I'm gonna swap these over to the brand new ones. The machine shop told me that all those little clouds and spots, like that one right there, is dirt in the oil, so this bearing had a pretty good amount of dirt on it, so it's a good thing that I'm changing these. I don't want any kind of oil or dirt behind the bearing, so I gotta clean all this up. Mm. 
that might not be good. I just shaved the back of the bearing off. Damn it. It wouldn't go on. I thought it just needed a little bit of force. I created a little lip right here from scraping that metal down. So I'm gonna try and file it out and hopefully get this all smooth so that it could just drop right in. I'm just trying to get the metal burrs out and that's it. I don't want to take any material out. Do I need to go down evenly on the thrust bearing instead of just one I put one side in and then tried jamming the other side in. So let me see if I could just go evenly. Yeah, that looked like it worked. Okay, so just go evenly and it'll go in. I'm gonna make sure to clean all these after touching them this much. So this is what plastic gauge is. It's a very general rough way to find out the clearance that you have from the bearings to the actual crankshaft itself. Since these never actually really touch, they're only just gliding on oil in between each other. And if the clearance is too tight, you're gonna get metal on metal and that's not good. So the ideal distance that we want is between these two, two and three thousandths. I need it 2.3 thousandths. So it needs to be very close to these two. If it's huge or way too small, then I don't really know what I can do. But right now we can just hope for it to be like this green one right here, two thousandths. And it's this little piece of plastic that you put on the bearing itself, tighten it down to the torque spec, and then you lift it back off. And you're gonna see this imprinted into the bearing and it's gonna give that size and you're gonna measure it. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cut a piece out. So now I wanna line the notches up on the crank and the cap and just drop them on down on top of the plastic gauge. There we go. I'm not too entirely sure the sequence that I'm supposed to do, but I'm gonna do it as if I was doing the head like that. ARP main studs call for 60 foot pounds in three equal steps. So 20, 40, 60. Alright, that's 20 foot pounds. Now I gotta go to 40, and then we gotta go to 60. Alright, 40 foot pounds is done. Now 60. Done to 60. Time to loosen it up. see hey that's not bad I don't think that might not be bad it's a little bit bigger than two thousandths but a little bit smaller than 1.5 thousandths when I put the reader right on top of the plastic gauge it reads almost perfectly 0 0.002 so two thousandths all the way along the entire bearing on this end and on the cap over here two thousandths is basically perfect let me continue on. And two thousandths on the money. Both of them. Just so you guys can see the plastic gauge that it left. All of them read exactly the same from one to another. They were all two thousandths. I forgot to do the last one though. But because they were so consistent, I'm gonna assume that the last one was two thousandths as well. On the plastic gauge website, it says to use some oil on a clean rag to clean the plastic gauge off. I've never done it like that. Last time I did it, I used acetone and I kind of scraped the bearing using the acetone. So that's why I would rather give this a try. It sounds like it won't work, but they say that the plastic gauge is oil soluble. So if you leave a little bit on the bearings, it won't be the end of the world. But ideally you do want to get it as clean as possible. But I'm hoping the rag picks up a majority of that plastic gauge. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Came out a lot faster than I thought it would. That's what she said. It actually does a pretty good 
job actually. Let me see. It actually did a really good job cleaning that up. It's still a little tiny bit visible, but I'm guessing that's what they mean. It's oil soluble. Like it won't get in the way if there's a tiny little bit left. So the oil actually worked really well to clean that up. It left no scratches and it completely got rid of all the plastic gauge material. Now I'm just going to do all of these off camera. Yeah, that oil was definitely the play because that cleaned up so nice. You just got to be very generous with the oil and it comes off. Just put a lot of oil on it. There's some lint in there too. So I'm going to pull the crankshaft out and clean it all. Oh, I got to clean the crankshaft and put assembly lube on all the bearings. I almost messed up. Before the bearing goes on, I have to install these oil squirters. So I've never installed these before. I thought they could just slip in. But I gotta take the bearing out and then tap them in from the bottom up. Oh yeah, that's definitely how it goes in. It's so loose though. Oh, is this supposed to be that loose? What the fuck? <laughs> no way is that supposed to be that loose. I'm out here on Google trying to see if this oil squirter is supposed to be that loose. I forgot I have the best example I could possibly ask for right here. <laughs> I stuck my hand down in there and the oil squirter moved by hand so they're supposed to be that loose. I'm doing the around the panty trick <laughs> with my bearings as if I wasn't even there. I didn't apply this when I did the plastic gauge. This is a fastener lubricant. ARP says to put this on everything that you use when you tighten it down so that it gives a consistent torque reading and I didn't do that. So it might torque down more when I use the lube than when I was dry. I don't know, I'm gonna put it in and see if it spins. We use some of this engine assembly lube onto the bearings. Hopefully that is the last time. Damn! Look at my fingers. Absolutely destroyed. This engine originally had this IJ crank scraper and I'm guessing it just pulls the oil off of the crankshaft so that it stays down in the oil pan since this was a race engine. I want to clean this though. There we go. And this scraper acts as the washer on this side. So no washer on this side and washer on this side. I didn't put the lube again. Oh my god. I'm going home. I did some more research last night and I was trying to see if using the ARP assembly lube on the studs and nut would make it so that you apply more torque with the lube and that's not how it works. What the lube is, is just a way for it to give a more consistent reading from one bolt to another. So when it's dry, you can over tighten it or under tighten it pretty easily. But with the lube, it just allows it to give a more consistent reading. So I'm hoping that since they were all 20 thousandths bearing clearance, then all the torques must have been pretty accurate to the 60 foot pounds that it called for. I'm just squeezing it out, getting it inside the threads and then all along the bottom of the nut and that should be good enough because once you tighten it down it's gonna squish it out more here we go 24 pounds now we gotta do 40 
now 64 pounds. I'm gonna try and do it in just one clean swoop so that the torque reading fully is accurate. just to make sure it's sturdy. So now, in theory, this crank should spin with no resistance at all. If it has resistance, that means that these are too tight. Oh, let's fucking go. Yes, it's good. I think this was the last big hurdle and it's spinning by hand and very easily. So I feel comfortable with this now. Now I'm gonna use this dial indicator that I got from Harbor Freight the first time I was building my engine. Now this thing has a magnetic base. I'm just gonna flip this switch and it's gonna become magnetic, so. There, it's stuck. <laughs> now this thing, I wanna put it right up onto the crank, but I wanna flip it around so I can see. I wanna make sure it's lined up square with the crank so that when I push on the crank, it's gonna push straight through the dial gauge. So here's the setup, the magnetic base. Off of there, off of there, and then I think I have to zero this. How do I? So the crank is gonna pull this way by a few thousandths. How do I zero it? Hmm, okay. Wait, what? I'm so confused. Fuck, am I messing this up? I don't know what these black marks do, but there we go, it's set perfectly to zero right there. So let's see, I'm gonna pry on the crank on the side and pull it to see if it's gonna move at all. So all I'm doing is applying a little bit of pressure on the crankshafts to move it within the thrust washer right there. Cause I wanna see how much clearance the thrust washer has at the front of the crankshaft. But the way that I do it is I just give it a little snug there and a little snug there. And what that does is right here, you see that it's at zero thousandths. And every little line is one thousandths. And I'm gonna give it the same little nudge on the back and you're gonna back see- the crank to the front? Yeah. Right there, two thousandths of play. You can see that it moved and stays at the two. So every time you push the clutch in, that's the pressure that goes through the crank and it only moves two thousandths of an inch. And then when it goes back to, oops, I slid it a little. When I move it back, two thousandths of play right there. So that's within spec, I'm good. If it's not enough or way too much, then there's a problem within that thrust bearing. But that is definitely enough to survive in this engine. I have to give a huge shout out to Bimmer Buddies on Instagram because he saved me with this head gasket. I didn't know what I was gonna do and I really didn't wanna run an MLS head gasket because I had a cut ring head gasket and I loved how it worked. So I felt like it would be a downgrade to go to an MLS. And CES did not have any 87 millimeter copper spacers. And Dave told me he had one sitting around and we're gonna trade head gaskets. Since I have a brand new 84 and a half millimeter head gasket, since I thought I was doing the stock build, I'm trading with him and everything is gonna be resolved. I'm gonna have the head gasket that I need. Let me open this up and show you guys exactly what it is. And he did install it onto an engine, but it never ran. So he disassembled it right away. It does have the copper spray that you put on the spacer, but that's no big deal. It's gonna get it regardless. I got some cool stickers, pens, I like these a lot, look at this one. That is amazing. He's been helping me out so much too throughout this build, so check him out. I appreciate him a lot. And then here we have the copper spacer. Look at this, fragile. That's screwed together just so that the copper spacer doesn't fold over. This is amazing. This was my old copper spacer. These are reusable. Anytime you take the head off and put it back on, all you need to change is the cork. The steel rings and the copper spacer are all reusable. But since I have a different size, the bore on this new engine is 86.49, and the bore on this one is 84 millimeters. And that shows in the copper spacer has an edge. So hopefully the one that's in this box doesn't have an edge. There it is. Look at the gap in the 84 millimeter one and the 87 millimeter. Damn, it's way thinner. Let's go. You can see how much better it fits on this. Oh, look at that. Let's go. Let's get this back together. I'm so hyped. Now that the crank is fully installed, I can do the same plastic gauge steps 
one by one on the pistons over there. Very time consuming, but like I said, it's worth it. Actually, I'm gonna take this bearing off and grind the top of the face down, get it all nice and clean, and then clean the entire piston up, and then put the bearing on. I'm gonna do it now before I forget. Oh, God. Because if I forget to do that, that's gonna be L. Let's see if this shit comes out sturdy. This is a good idea, but I'm about to have a clean ass piston after this. Eating a Twix behind me like that? Sneaking one in. <laughs> <laughs> All clean now. I wanted to make sure I got everything off of here because when fuel sprays on there, I don't want it to soak into the carbon. So you can have a nice clean combustion every time. I'm gonna go put this bearing back in. I was trying to find out what direction these pistons went in, whether it's this way or this way. And in the video that I tore down the engine, I can see that the notch on the bearing is on this right side when you're looking at it from the front of this engine. So I know that I have to put this piston in with the eagle of the rod towards the front of the engine. That's a very important, I can't mix that up. So with no rings, I'm gonna push it in and get this reading. This is sketchy. I hate this so much. I think I'm gonna scratch the cylinder walls by pulling this piston up, but how else am I supposed to do this? Here we go. Here we go. These torque to 43 foot pounds. I'm gonna bring them to 20 first and then 43 after. I don't want the crank to spin at all, so I'm gonna hold it while I torque it. No, fuck, if I spin it, I'm scared that it's gonna smear the results. For those of you that were freaking out when I hit this really hard last time, this is why you have to hit it really hard. It's impossible to get it off if you don't give it just a good fucking hammer right on the cap. Cause what the hell? I'm trying to be as gentle as possible and it's not happening. So I'm slowly gonna start fucking ramping up my aggression and it's gonna come out. Look at this. I slowly ramped up my aggression and it fucking came out. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> I'm so fucking yo. mad. This shit just fell out of the engine. What the fuck, yo? I did not expect that. Me neither. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of a nick. Dude, this thing is not gonna run. I've dropped it fucking everything. This is so stupid. Normally the piston rings hold the piston in. And I forgot that there's nothing holding it in, so it's just gonna fall. I should have had my hand under it. It's 1.5 thousandths, which is not that good. It needs to kind of be around the same. But yeah, I don't know if it's because of the smearing it around and twisting the crank while it's in there. I'm just gonna move on to the other one and try and get better, and then I'm gonna come back to this one at the end. Eagle facing towards the front of the engine. Passive Eagle's got me trying to fuck a stud. <laughs> What's up with you, yeah? I mean, you act up, yo. This shit's crazy. I keep spinning the crank by accident. What the fuck? Just wait. 
because when this first happened, dog, I was on my phone, and then all of a sudden I just see pistols on the floor. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> that shit just fucking got caught on that crate scraper. Ah, it like hyperextended my finger this way. Ah, I got caught on the middle. And I'm fucking over this, yo. <laughs> Yes, but I'm holding it this time so it didn't fall. Okay. You're dropping it. it. I scratched the walls with the. Good job. Ah! I need to take a breather after that one. <coughs> that shit fully sandwiched my shit. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. <laughs> I got it, I'm right. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Rage Town. Thank you for doing What size? What size? <laughs> Small. Pussy? <laughs> you want a medium? Nah. Get him a fucking medium. Get you a large. <laughs> so, I'm about to shit myself. Finally, I'm done checking all the clearances for the bearings. And here are the results. The only thing that I'm kinda worried about is how big the gap is of the second ring. I wanted it to be around 23 thousandths or 24 thousandths, but I didn't touch them at all. I just got a better reading on this one than this one. And that's how big they are, so I don't know, should be fine, but everything looks good. There's nothing that's too tight or too loose. The pistons cleaned up so well. CP pistons, eagle rods. I'm gonna throw this picture up on the screen right now, but this is the orientation that the rings are supposed to go in. So I'm gonna line the eagle up as the front of the engine and then just base everything off of that. So I can grab the rings for cylinder number one and I can start by putting the oil rings in. The slinky one, it's easiest to just put it in first. I wanna make sure they don't sit on top of each other just so that they butt up against each other. I took the rings back off and I'm wiping it all down with some isopropyl alcohol clean it all off, and I forgot I gotta soak it in braking oil before putting it on the piston. Ooh, look at all that coming off. Good thing I'm cleaning it before putting it in. <laughs> Actually, before putting the rings on, I wanna clean the block to make sure that that block is completely clean and coated in braking oil to make sure that the rings are ready to get put in right away. You hear this right now? Now before flipping the engine over, you want to make sure that this crankshaft is all the way away from the piston you're going to be working on. Cylinder 1, I'm going to want to move the crankshaft there. Cylinder 2, I'm going to want to move the crankshaft here. Cylinder 3, I'm going to want to move the crankshaft there. And so on and so forth. There's so many of these small little details when building an engine that you just got to kind of know. I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to hopefully get rid of all the bad contaminants and then use the good braking oil. Also, the rag will come up dirty if you touch the crankshaft, so try and not do that too much. Look at all that dirt. Shit, it's leaving a little bit of lint though, and that's not too good. I can be real generous with this now, because this is the final assembly. All right, the oil ring is in and it's lubed. Now I can grab the second piston ring, do the same, cover it in some oil. The second ring will go on this side. And now the top ring as well. There we go. Top ring here, bottom ring there. And then the oil rings are in place too. Now I could just drop it in. I've had this cheap ass ring compressor sitting in my cabinet for two years 
So I'm trying to get it super clean. I put it in the parts washer and everything. I want to make sure everything is nice. Now it helps a lot to push on one edge right here and then compress the other so that the rings stay in place. Oh my god. Here comes the fun part of seeing if your rings are lined up or not. Yeah, this one moved a lot. <laughs> so we want to just leave a little collar right there just so you can line it up with the cylinder and hope for the best honestly. I can see that that gap is perfectly on this side where I want it to sit so I'm hoping that the second ring followed. The eagle is facing the front of the engine. <clears throat> I'm pushing down. Oh, I baby dicked it. I had to go a little harder. They got caught on the rings. I gotta re-tighten it now. Attempt number two. Oh no. Dude, this tool is so annoying. Only the oil rings got in. It just bottomed out on the second ring. I gotta get that thing positioned better for this to work. I'm gonna coat the inside of this with some breaking oil too. Let me see if that helps. Get some lube on in there. Please. Fuck! That feels so bad. I think it's gonna break the rings if I slam it like that. Dude! Yes! The ring gap is still exactly right there where I wanted it to be. Now I gotta put in the assembly lube up here. I'm gonna 20 foot pounds first and then 43 after. Here we go. So then their one is done. <gasps> yeah. So every step of the way I gotta come in and spin the crankshaft around and make sure that everything is moving nice and freely. And as you can see the piston's coming up and down, no problem. Now gotta do the next five. Eagle facing forward. <laughs> Let's go. It's getting a little more difficult, but that's to be expected. There's more friction. Eagle facing forward. <laughs> getting better. Still crankable by hand. Ego facing forward. Oh, L. <laughs> it's definitely getting harder. Ow! But it's still going smoothly. Ego facing forward. Come on. What the fuck? It's stuck already. I pushed down and it's so tight that it didn't go down at all. What the fuck? Yo, it's so tight that it's not going. There we go. <laughs> so then the number five is installed. Now it's getting very hard by hand, but that's to be expected. It's still smooth. Eagle facing forward on the last one. Let's see if it'll go on the first try. It's hard as it's. <laughs> oh my God, no! I don't wanna. I don't wanna see the crank. Oh my God! What the fuck, yo? I have to push so hard to get it to slide out of here, and I pushed it all the way down. I can't do this. I can't. I heard it hit the crank or hit something. Please. I can't look. On the last fucking one. 
I had to push hard as shit through that tool. I even put braking oil and everything on the inside so it'll slide smoother. So this is what it's looking like and look at how far down it got. There's no way that didn't bottom out. <laughs> All right, let's see what happened down here. Hopefully nothing, hopefully nothing. Oh my God. It literally landed. That is so bad. That is so bad. Look at it. The bearing literally landed right on the crankshaft. There was no lube on the bearing because I wasn't there yet. <laughs> so the bearing just clicked it dry. Let me push this thing down and out of the way so I can rotate this crank. I don't feel anything. Oh my God, I think I just got super lucky. Wow, I got super lucky. The bearing somehow, I don't know, <laughs> landed perfectly and didn't scratch or nick the crank. Yes, there's no marks. Let's go. Oh my, my heart. Done. Fuck, finally. Wow, this took forever. This took so fucking long. This was like three or four days of just plastic gauge, measuring, cleaning, oh my fixing. Gosh, it look crispy, nigga. I love to see it. I love to see it. The forged bottom end is fully together. Taking an edge and running it along is the best way to cut this tape off. Cuts into the block on its own. You just gotta give it a little bit of persuasion. Like that, look, it's cutting super clean. Finally, after so much time of cleaning, making sure everything is good, the plastic gauge took so long, gapping the rings took so long, cleaning everything took so long, it's just, <laughs> you gotta do everything six times. So it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. But now that it's at this point, I am so happy I took the time to just be super thorough with everything. Although I did drop some stuff. I still messed up a few times, but you live and you learn. I'm hoping some of you guys don't make the same mistakes that I did because <laughs> they're painful when you'd make them. But yeah, this is good to go. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit! No! Yo! What the fuck do I do? It's leaking oil a lot. That is so fried. I want to make sure there's no scoring and no marks in here. How do I take this out? Nope. Look at that. Here we have my old oil pump. I took it off just to see what the condition was. And you can see all those scoring marks. And then there, that is no good. There's no way that I'm going to use this oil pump again. And I can feel it with my nail too. You can see how it's moving. So. There's no way I'm reusing this and the shaft. The first time I used this oil pump, I welded onto it and then I cut the weld off. So this shaft is already weaker and you can see it's cut off. So I definitely need a new oil pump. The spare M52 that was in our shop, I took the oil pump out of it. I just dropped the pan and took the oil pump because I need it for my engine. So I'm gonna just clean it real quick and open it up and see if this one is any better than mine. Yeah, so the condition of this oil pump is so much better. There's no scratches, no grooves, no scoring on anything. Everything looks in good condition, and especially this one right here. My other one had so many scratches that I could feel with my nail. This is way better, inside and out, so 
this is the one I'm going to be using. Boom! I'll put some assembly lube in here just so that the first startup isn't dry. There it is, 10 newton meters. I have this nut that has a hole in it so that I can use some safety wire to hold it into the sprocket so that it doesn't come loose because this has a tendency to come loose righty, loosey, and lefty tighty. Isn't that weird seeing me tighten it like that? <laughs> and it gets tightened to 18 foot pounds. Oh, I gotta put it on loose and to tighten it, yep. Ah, I could only do five foot pounds. Oh! That worked. <laughs> Once again, if I didn't have my list, I would be so overwhelmed with things to do, so I just go one by one, and I arrange it in the order that I gotta get it done, so it's just one by one, that's how building cars is. I got all of the valves labeled so that I can soak them in the parts washer and hopefully it'll make it easier to get the carbon off of it. I should have gotten it off before lapping them. I got them all in this. This little tin came with the parts washer. Damn, that is perfect. So the label's sticking out of the water. It's not water, the fluid. <laughs> so I'm gonna let these soak for an hour and then scrub them and see if that fixes anything. Are you tightening your exhaust, yo? Yeah, I know what's That's way too tight, yo. <laughs> I don't think this gasket is good though. So all I'm trying to do is get the carbon off of it so that when the fuel lands on there, it just splashes right off and the carbon doesn't absorb any of it. And I think that's the only way to get it off because I tried everything and you gotta kinda be a little bit of aggressive with it. So I hope that red sponge was enough, but also I tried my hardest not to touch the valve seat. So I didn't, I don't remember hitting it, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do this valve grinding again. See, I'm running the valve through and there's no black carbon coming off, so that's good. The valve is clean, and I did my best to not touch the seats, so it's only up here, and I stopped right when it comes off clean. You can kind of tell when there's no more residue coming off. So this was the first valve, and look, I can put this on and dust still comes off. Right there. So it's not eating any material on the actual valve, it's just taking all that grime off. So here we have it. After some time just putting in the elbow grease that it needed, it looks so much better now. I feel a lot better about these valves. This exhaust was leaking so bad because this stud was stripped and I forgot to take it out last time, so I'm gonna try and remove it with some vice grips. No, it's just gonna look like shit. There we go, I tightened it a little bit, and then it loosened. Let's go! All the gaskets to do the whole engine are in this bag. FCP Euro just threw it in there and said that's everything, which is cool. I got the valve stems here though, almost forgot.
I did a little bit of a mid job cleanup, finally mounted the shop towels, cleaned up, and I did a little hook for my backpack. That helps so much. It feels so much cleaner now and makes me feel like I'm in an actual workspace now. And over here as well, I threw all the papers out, put all the caps from that engine into that, and I'm all ready to go. It's really nice to clean up any chance that you get just because moving on, you don't lose anything in the mess and it just it saves so much headache. So just keep your workplace as clean as you can. Now I can take this little red sleeve, slide it onto the valve, and that's gonna help the valve seal just slip right on and not get caught up and not break on anything. So I just drop it on there. Come in with a 10 mil, just give it a little tap to make sure it's fully seated. It's fully seated, pull the little red thing out and she's good to go. Now you could drop the spring right in, but I wanna clean it before. Oh my goodness, that was annoying. Please stay on. Ooh, that 24 times is so bad, but it's got to get done. Finally, it's done. Matt, how long did that take? We were here for like three hours and I just sat here. <laughs> I just sat here. I have not let up for like three or four hours. My neck is fried. Constant this is <laughs> so back breaking, but it's worth it. I keep saying it, it's worth it because this thing is going to be mint when it's done. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna use some WD-40 before I leave because I did degrease all the springs. This is just a light rough down. I'm gonna put oil on it, but I'm gonna do that once the head is actually installed. There we go. It's all lubed up. I wanna try and clean this timing cover down because it's old and just aluminum looking. I'm gonna hit it with some scotch pad and see how clean this gets. All right, here's the test today. This is as good as I'm gonna get it. I was scrubbing it and I realized why am I wasting so much time on this? There's no way I'm gonna be able to get it perfect. So I'm leaving it like this. This is more than enough. Oil pump to block is 16 foot pounds. I don't want to undo this nut, so I'm just going to take the oil pump off so I can put the chain in with the oil pump. So I'm going to put it on there. And slide it into place. Will it slide onto place? It will! Yes! Let's go, I don't need to take that off. So I can take the safety wire, put it through the nut. I don't want to go too much because it'll make it weak, but... Something like that. Yeah? Yeah. So I really appreciate it. The oil pump is now securely held on and this just prevents it from backing off, so it's held into the gear and it's gonna spin with the gears. I like this option a lot better. Do I need a C clip? I think it does. 
There we go. There we go. The longer side goes up because it just doesn't fit when it's down. I can install this front cover seal. Make sure it's all nice and coated before I put the tummy cover on because I did use that really strong degreaser to take all the grease off so I want to make sure how all has some oil. Now I can take these metal gaskets and rest them into place. I'm not going to put anything on them because the service manual doesn't tell me to so I'm just going to install them dry. This gasket is so bent and warped but got to make it work. I just need to get these dowels on and that's it. There we go. Both gaskets are lined up and I can tighten them down now. That doesn't feel good. It is super short. Let's go. I put in a new longer bolt from the back and then now I'm putting it back in now because that shorter bolt kind of ruined the threads a little bit, which isn't too good, but. Tummy cover is installed. Damn, this engine looks insane on the camera. Front timing cover looks a lot cleaner this time than the last time I rebuilt it just because of the parts cleaner. I can hardly see my top dead center even outside of the car. So I'm gonna use a paint pen and try and line this up a little bit better because this is... There we go, that's much better. Might as well, right? While I'm here. Yeah, it's actually a huge upgrade. I also did it on there so I can see it a little better from inside the car. I've just been dropping everything into the parts cleaner and cleaning them all up. These studs are a great example. It has all the old lube on it. I gotta clean that all up before I put it back into this fresh ass engine. All cleaned up. It's so much better. It's always worth the effort. It takes like 20 minutes, but it's worth it. I didn't want to go through the effort of trying to save the old dowel pins, so I just got two new ones from FCP Euro. A lot better than trying to reuse the old ones. Put some lube onto the bottom threads. Oh. I need to put the dowel pin in first, though. There we go. It's fully seated. CES, the maker of the head gasket, recommends you to put a bead of silicone all the way along the whole timing cover. Service manual only says right here, but I'm gonna continue doing it all the way around because that's what I did last time. And I'm gonna be using some of this stuff. And I gotta make sure I cross over to the block to get the gap between the timing cover. It's way too thin. I gotta cut it this bigger. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that I had enough. I'm gonna try and leave it nice thin amount of silicone. I don't want too much on there. The RTV says to assemble immediately, so I'm gonna go get the copper spacer. So now that's there, gotta clean the copper spacer. I forgot. Now I gotta let this dry up for a little bit so it's tacky, and then I'll drop it on the engine. I'm in the wrong hole in the back. Damn it, that's why it's not going down. There we go. Whoo! 
I made sure to thoroughly inspect this piece of cork and I got all pieces of debris off of it. Boom! Now I gotta make sure that all the grooves are facing up because those are what cut into the head. Make sure everything is nice and seated levelly. If you've been enjoying the video so far, I would greatly appreciate it if you take a second to go down below and hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a ton and I really appreciate you guys for watching this far through this really long video. care about right now is that RTV on the front timing cover since that has a set time so I'm gonna get these I don't know actually should I tighten the head first and then these man All the washers are in now. Gotta do the same with the nuts. Put the lube on the bottom and inside the threads. Alright, now I torque the whole head down. The makers of the head gasket recommend that you tighten the head over a three day period. So the first day, today, I'm gonna tighten it to 35 foot pounds and then leave it overnight because I want to allow the copper spacer to compress. I did this last time and it worked. I never had head gasket issues. Knock on wood, but hopefully I have as good as luck as last time. So like I said, 35 foot pounds is the first measurement. Always want to go by the torque sequence of the head, so I'm going to be looking at this the whole time. So like that, it starts giving out and that's just the lube doing its job, giving you a better reading. Good to go. I'm going to check it one more time off camera. Now I can tighten these front two bolts to 10 newton meters. That timing covers threads are so soft, so 10 newton meters and that is it. So I gotta continue down the path of cleaning everything that goes back on the engine. I'm gonna pop these two off and try and get this thing cleaned up. This is bad. I swear that this was leaking the entire time because this thing is just hideous. Let's see how much better this can get. I got it all oil free and as good as I want to get it because this is a lot of elbow grease and I cannot get it perfect. If I had a vapor blaster, this thing would come out sick, but that's as good as we're getting. It's all clean of any oil. That's all I can ask for, honestly. But over here, this oil distribution block is how I get oil to my turbo. This is my oil pressure sensor and this is my oil temperature sensor. So I get all of my three things from this one block and then this bolts up right down there and then the Vanos goes to there or either one. I got to look it up. But I also have a new Vanos line because I've never changed this one. This has always been an old one. Whenever I'm not working on the engine, I always put the plastic bag that the block came in over it just so that hopefully no dust gets into it. But it is day two. It's been 22 hours since I first torqued the head. Let's see if it's holding 35 foot pounds. Yeah, so none of them moved, so I'm gonna go up to 65 foot pounds now. Damn. All right, now it's getting difficult. 65 foot pounds is a lot. <laughs> and you can see the air pockets when I'm tightening it, it's just it's letting go, releasing. Now I gotta check them again off camera. 
This is all tight to 65 foot pounds. Now I gotta wait till tomorrow to do the final sequence. I'm gonna go rebuild the Vanos while I wait. So here I have my Vanos unit and I've never done the repair kit on this to fix the seal or the rattle. So I don't think I've ever had working Vanos because they say that if you pull it up and it falls down, that means that the seal is cooked. So there's no oil pressure being created by that seal to push this seal enough and actually give you the moving of the camshaft. There's not enough pressure behind it. It's just falling on its own. That should not be happening. For anything, I'm going to clean it up in the parts washer because this thing is disgusting. I got to give a little appreciation to this parts washer because this thing has been putting in overtime. Everything that comes out of this thing is brand new in terms of oil on top of it. The biggest thing about reassembly is just having it clean and this parts washer makes it really easy for me to just take all oil off. Also, I realized that this Venus solenoid was still on while I was doing it. I don't know if that's gonna mess it up, but we'll see. The scotch pad even polished it up a little bit. It looks really good, but let me start turning this down. I have this kit here from Race German. It's gonna fix the rattle, the seals, and I got the extra socket because you gotta grind it down to make sure it grabs onto the nut fully. So this seal right here is what pushes this whole thing up and down. And when the seal isn't making a seal anymore, it doesn't have the strength to do that. And mine definitely did not have the strength to do that. Is everything contained in here? I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think there's anything more on this end. I can clamp this down with the soft jaws now. I don't want to damage anything on the piston, but the soft jaws allow me to give it some good force. While it's in, I'm gonna cut this seal off. There's a Teflon seal on top of an O-ring, so I have to cut the Teflon seal first and then take the O-ring out. I just ripped it to get it out. <laughs> when the outsides are flat, it's when it's done and they are very flat. I could even feel it. There's an edge on an O-ring. This is everything that comes in the kit. This is the seals, and then this is for the rattle repair, and this is the special socket. So the modified socket is on the right, and the not modified one is on the left. They cut down that little edge so that it can get full seating onto the nut, and you don't strip it. The nut is the 18 mil right here. There it is, it barely grabs onto that. Let's see if the impact will get it off. Yes, it will. Now it calls to loosen it and flip it vertically. Now there's a T30 Torx right there, and it's reverse thread, so I need to go lefty tighty, righty loosey. But first I'm gonna take all the washers out. This top washer comes out first. That's the wear down side. This rattle bearing can come out. Yes! There it is, it's loose. All right, that's the bearing outer ring. I'm gonna be changing that. There it is. The oil holds it in super tight. Oh, I'm gonna be just flipping these around. You can see the wear right there that the roller had on it. If I flip it around, it's a brand new part. <laughs> so that's the order that I took everything out of the Venus unit and it's gonna go back in exactly how it came out. And then new rollers right here and new outer ring. And then we'll get this thing back together. Like I said, the parts washer is going crazy. By the end of this engine rebuild, this parts washer is gonna be 30 and all, cause it's just too good. There's some gouging on the shaft of the piston. I'm gonna try and run a red scotch pad over it just to knock down the highs and call it there. I just wanna hit it very lightly. I don't wanna take any material out. There it is, nice and smooth. That's all that counts, I think. Hopefully that's a little better now. It's very smooth. It does have a little play, but I don't know. The wear side down, away from the roller. This ring can go in. There we go, that ring is fully seated. That bearing can go in. I don't know if I should put lube on there or not because none of the instructions say to do, but that feels very wrong to do. So I'm gonna go do more research. 
and see if that's true. The gear is held in by the vise. Now I can start reassembling this thing. I'm gonna make sure and coat this in some braking oil just because I can't bring myself to put this thing in dry. I gotta at least cover it in some oil. Watch this not need oil and it gets fried because I put oil on it. That would be my luck. Now I'll put the fat washer on with the brand new side facing down, wear away. Now I can tighten this to eight Newton meters. There it is, that's all it is. Oil up this next one. The last washer, flipping it upside down as well. Now I could put this cover back on. This bolt right here needs to go to 40 Newton meters or 30 foot pounds. 40 Newton meters. The soft jaws wants to pull the whole thing out. Here we go, it's good actually. So apparently it's good to have play like that, but it's just in and out that it can't have any. So I don't know, maybe it didn't have any play. Axel plays this way, so now it has none. That's all that matters, whatever. Okay, so I was confused why this thing still had the radial play, and it's because I didn't get the kit that actually minimized that. There's another kit in the market that is a little bit shorter, and it makes it so that there's not as much play side to side and it wears out less overall because there's less movement but still BMW does say that the only thing that matters is the play up and down so although it's not the best solution for Vanos this is going to get the job done because there's no play up and down. So now the last thing left is to put the o-ring in and then the teflon to seal over that. Okay the brown one is the o-ring. It says to try not to fold the seal over and like have it twist around. So I gotta make sure it's not folded over. Like right there, it's a little folded. Yeah, that O-ring looks to be good. It's sitting flat and evenly. Now this is the scary part. I really don't wanna break this, but it's Teflon. So they say you need to stretch it a little bit, but damn, how much do I need to stretch it? It is pretty hot out, so hopefully it can. Oh my God, this needs to stretch a lot. I'm just trying to stretch it evenly by going all the way around and not just stretching it in one place. Please. Ah. It's almost there. Oh. I, if I just pushed it down, it would have gone easier because that was very easy. I just pushed it down instead of trying to stretch it. Ow. We're good to go now. Everything is sitting nice and flush and even. This is ready to get installed again. I'm going to apply some assembly lube on the mating surfaces of this Teflon seal. There's also a chamfer. I got to make sure that I get that all lubed up too. You gotta get me some lube on that seal. So this says to insert at a 30 degree angle. And then once it gets close like that, I gotta rotate the whole thing. How the hell am I gonna rotate it though? How am I meant to rotate this? Oh. Yeah, and now I gotta take it out again. Oh. So now I just gotta verify that it was sitting properly. It wasn't pinched or anything. Yep, we're all set. Now I can press it back in and let it sit for two minutes to let it fully compress. All right, it's been two minutes. Let me pull this out. Yeah, we're good, so this is going back on. Now I can tighten these bolts to 10 Newton meters. There we go. So now the two most important things are fixed. It doesn't drop anymore now when I pull it out all the way and there's no play up and down. It has a little bit radial, but it doesn't really matter. So now that I finished with building the Vanos, it's 7 p.m. right now and I just refinished torquing this to 65 foot pounds. So tomorrow is the last day. It's the third day now. I'm gonna tighten them to 65 and make sure they're still there. And then I gotta loosen them one by one to release the dirt and debris and any kind of air in the lube. So I'm gonna tighten it right back down after and then bring it to 
85. All right, yeah, they all maintain 65. So now that they're all at 65 foot pounds, I'm gonna loosen them one by one. There we go, it's loose. Now I'm gonna bring it back up to 65 foot pounds. I'm gonna keep going. Loosen them one by one and then tighten them back up again. This is gonna end up being a full body workout by the time I'm done with this. <laughs> now is the fun part. Immediately after doing that, I'm torquing it to 85 foot-pounds now. Also, I would prefer a clicking type torque wrench now. I see why, because once you get to the torque, it clicks and it breaks away so you don't give it more torque. Because with this, I'm just trying to hold it at the torque it needs, but sometimes you can go over and it's just, I think click is better for tightening heads and stuff like that. This is mainly good for using the degree angle. Like if I need to tighten a bolt 90 degrees, this will give me the degree reading. Yeah, 85 foot-pounds. Oh, man! <laughs> it's like jumping at 84 and then barely touches 85. But that's what I don't like about the digital torque wrench. I'm trying to get it to consistently read just like 85.1 or 85.2, but damn, this is hard. <laughs> All right, that one is done. Yeah, I'm gonna try and hold it until the red stays at the 85. My forearms are dead. Oh my God. I just checked them all again, they're all at 85. So I'm gonna keep doing this periodically every few hours to make sure the copper spacer are fully compressed. I got my old thermostat housing cleaned up. This is an E39 M52 thermostat housing and it has that little bleed screw right there and it makes it a little easier to bleed the coolant. I can take all the air out of the system through that. But yeah, everything is going in the parts washer and it's coming out looking really good. I'm gonna see what the parts washer can do to this. This is a Stewart water pump and it's a little crusty and I want it to be clean for the O-ring to seat in there. Once again, the parts washer went crazy. This is what I'm using by the way. The solvent is PSC 1000 from Tractor Supply. This stuff is really good. But the big thing now is it's all clean so the O-ring can sit properly and there won't be any leaks. 80 Celsius thermostat. Now this dry ass O-ring has to go onto there. When I got this thermostat, I also drilled out a tiny little hole right here and I'm gonna position this upright when the engine is upright so that any air bubbles can travel through and help me bleed the coolant a little easier. I was inspecting this gasket and I was wondering why there was so much play right here. So I was looking at it, that definitely has to be warped. So I was just looking around and it just so happens that it's cracked right there. So I need to get a new one of these. I almost installed it and I can see it a little bit on this side right there you can see a little crack this is definitely a leak because this won't even allow I don't even know is this why my car overheated this thing was being a hoe and it wouldn't bleed wait so that makes a lot of sense then cuz I, I thought I was tweaking every time I was putting coolant in my car it would just disappear and I was always wondering where is it going so that's why I never put coolant in it. It only had water because it kept going somewhere and I couldn't find it. And the day that my engine blew up, I was having very bad coolant problems. So maybe it was from this. F. I put some lubricant on the O-ring and I just used coolant for the lubricant because that is coolant's purpose. I don't want to fold the O-ring at all. I just want to set it down in place. I 
I just seeded it by hand. What the hell? I've never been able to do that. <laughs> that just goes to show if you clean everything up, it just goes smoothly. What? That is crazy. I've always struggled so hard on that. All the 10 mil bolts and nuts on the whole engine is always torqued to 10 Newton meters, the M6 bolts. Water pump is installed. This is a brand new Vanos line. This thing feels really good. I should have gotten this so long ago, but I was sleeping. Two new copper crush washers. The usual, everything is nice and clean. There we go, that gasket's sitting nice. So it is recommended to lubricate the O-ring so that it doesn't pinch on the way in. So I'm gonna do exactly that. This is the break-in oil. Now it's ready for install. I'm gonna try and take this dowel and that dowel out safely so I can use them. That's one. That's number two. I kinda mangled it a bit, but I'm gonna try and fix it. Now it can get installed. Ow. Oil filter housing goes to 22 Newton meters. There we go. They're all at 22 Newton meters. Hopefully that doesn't leak. Now I did grenade my ringlings previously, so I have to really clean this oil pan out to make sure everything is super clean, or else I did all that work for nothing. This is the most important part now. I need to make sure this oil pan is crispy inside out. Yeah, that's disgusting. I can confidently say that if I didn't have that parts washer, cleaning this would have been a lot more difficult because that thing, you can just leave it on and it just pumps out everything. And it makes it super clean. Look at how nice this looks. This thing is just icy now. Look at that. No kind of oil on there. But I still need to take all this RTV off. I'm gonna use that little roll lock wheel again. As you can tell, when I welded in the bung to my oil pan, I didn't really take into account the possibility to warp the flange of the oil pan, and I did that. So be careful to not warp your pan, because you can see all that silicone right there isn't coming off wherever else it is because that's warped. So I'm probably gonna have to put some more RTV right here under the oil pan gasket, just because. There we go, I made another mess cleaning this off. It's gonna go back in the parts washer. This is the oil level sensor. I want to clean up everywhere. Yeah, this pan cleaned up crazy well. All the RTVs off because I'm gonna use an actual oil pan gasket this time. So hopefully it won't leak. I think this was a big leak last time. But yeah, this oil pan looks like new now. I put braking oil on the O-ring. 10 newton meters. I actually lost a day of footage while recording this, and that day I was doing the lifter cleaning. I was taking apart the lifters. I went out and grabbed this needle nose pliers just to do this job. Grabbing onto the little piston right here and pulling out everything inside of the lifter because all of them were stuck. Normally these are supposed to have a little springiness. You're supposed to push it in and out and it's supposed to bounce back, but they were solid. All of them were solid on mine. So I had to go in one by one, clean it, put it in the parts washer, clean everything so that all the lifters that went into the engine got cleaned and all the oil removed inside of them. So the way that I was taking these apart was I was grabbing right onto the only edge that I could of the lifter, grabbing on very hard, clamping down and twisting 
and pulling at the same time. You have to twist it because there's like a little snap ring that holds it in. So if you just try and pull it, it will not come out. But my pliers were rounding out and it wasn't letting me clamp down and it kept slipping off and I was getting so frustrated. I eventually went to the grinder, sanded it smooth and it grabbed on and came off super easy. So make sure you keep that super flat while you're doing that. But I had to buy a new lifter because the piston assembly inside of here was stuck, as you can tell. So everything comes out and it's all in here right now. There, it's apart. <laughs> Where's the spring though? Shit, I threw it, but I lost the spring now. Okay, well, this goes inside of here and then a spring sits right on here and there's a ball valve in there and that allows oil to go in there, but not to come out. So if you pre-lube these, they don't allow the oil to come out after they're already installed. So I installed them all dry to make sure that they accept only the amount of oil that they need to accommodate the valve lash for each valve so there's a spring that sits in there and then that whole assembly drops in there and then that spring actually look you see how it's a little bit springy there's no spring that's just the air pressure holding it but once you click this in there that lifter assembly would be fully set up there you go that's an assembled lifter so i did that 24 times it was very time consuming still getting stuck I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to just replace this one lifter because I tried cleaning it out again even with brake cleaning and everything and it's still getting very stuck. I just came back from FCP Euro to pick up this brand new lifter and the new thermostat housing. This is Euro parts and I'm pretty sure that's why it broke. The casting is just not the best quality but this is the only one that's aluminum with that extra bleed valve so that's the one that I get. And this lifter was solid and I could not give the spring action to it so I took it out and it had oil inside. So I drained the oil out and it's dry now and it has the spring adjustment now. And I would want it to have that spring adjustment so that when the engine is first turned on, they all accommodate to their exact valve lash that they need. I don't wanna put oil in them because then they won't be able to really bleed out and let out the pressure that they need to let out. So putting them in dry makes them all fit up exactly how they need to fit up per that valve. So this can get fully installed now. I cleaned all the lifters, but I didn't clean the trays, so I'm gonna clean these trays up before fully installing everything. I sprayed it with the air compressor, and now that it's dried off, I'm gonna use some assembly lube on the outside to make sure the lifter is nice and coated. And to put a drop where the valve sits. Now the best way that I've found to get these lifters on is to cut a piece of cardboard out that's narrower than the bolts so that you could just line this up on the cam trays. Here we go. That was butter. Knuckles kept getting stuck, yo. I couldn't put, drop it down. Yes! Look at that. The next step is now I can start cleaning the camshafts to get all that dirty oil off and coat it all in some new assembly lube. This thing is disgusting. These all have assembly lube on them now too. I made sure to clean off where the caps sit to make sure there's nothing there. But I forgot to clean the caps before. Everything is covered in like dust and hair so everything that goes into the engine has to get cleaned before going back in. These things look so dried out after that parts washer. I gotta lube my shaft up now. Pause, pause. No, no pause, pause. with this one. No pause with this one.
D1. Damn, I gotta check my phone to see what direction those caps go. These caps only go in one way. I tried putting it in like this just to see, and it does have preference to one way, so all of the other ones follow after. There we go. That one's sitting nice now. Bro, they, I saw one with like the dude pulls out his, his dick, and then she's like trying to like put it back in, and he just nuts off. I'm gonna rotate the engine a little bit just so I can lower all the pistons so none of the pistons are at the top so that we don't have any contact with valves and then I'll move it back after. Young boy better. <laughs> top dead center is when these lobes are pointing at a 45 degree angle up this way so I turned it just a little bit past that so that the caps can fully sit down on all of them and the bolts are just started now I'm gonna start tightening two and six evenly just quarter turn at a time two and six until the whole camshaft tightens up snug it's hot as a bitch They're all snug. Oh, it worked. So now I'm gonna rotate it back so when this is parallel with the head. Yeah, there we go. So that cam is in position. Now I gotta do the same to the other side. All clean now, ready for install. I would say that's uh, manipulation. Manipulation. <laughs> I guess I'm a little bit I'm so happy right now. There we go, now I can start tightening again. Cap two and cap six. Quarter turn at a time. I wanna be nice and slow with it. There we go, the camshafts are on. Now I gotta tighten them to spec. The camshafts are in position to get timed when the top of this is parallel with the head so I just need to rotate this one a tiny little bit to get them both parallel and then I can put the timing tool in to hold them both in. I just like turning it a little bit so that the caps go on a little easier and now I can rotate it back. So in the end these two are going to be pointing right at each other and then those are going to be flat. There. Now I got to get the engine back in top dead center. Hopefully nothing hits. Just... There we go, it's on top dead center. I'm going to use this M52 timing tool. I got it on Amazon. The link is going to be in the description. I don't have the flywheel on since it's on the stand, so I can't use the flywheel dowel pin. So by eye, this is how I got. Damn, that's pretty bad. So I'm going to rotate the cams until they're both sitting flush. Now I just gotta tighten them down to 11 foot pounds. I'm gonna do the torque sequence of the head. Finally, the camshafts are tight. Woo! Through. I'm gonna bring these up to 10 Newton meters. Now I gotta adjust it until the holes are lined up exactly where I want it to be. <laughs> I just read up on an article and it said that these arrows should be facing vertically. So I don't have those vertically. So there's two. Also, look at my hand. The parts washer absolutely destroyed my hand. Got in my glove and destroyed my hand. This hurts so bad. Okay, so then I want those holes in the camshaft to line up on the left side because I'm reusing the timing chain. So I gotta just move them over a few clicks. Right there. All right, I gotta go one tooth over now. There we go, perfect. I can take this whole tensioner, put it in before putting the big chain that connects the two. These definitely go to 10 Newton meters. All right, 
right, that's fully installed now. I bought a new timing chain tensioner just because I've never changed this old one before and I didn't even realize that it's an upgraded hydraulic one. I took it apart and I was wondering where the spring was because I wanted to compare the length of the spring. Oh my goodness, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> So it's able to hold tension a lot better at the higher RPM compared to the spring, which is good. Let's go with George Russell, watch him, and we're gonna go for audio up. So we'll oh, I'm listening to the machinery. <laughs> Lastly, before I can finish the timing, I have to clean all these up. So you know the deal, parts washer time. I always like to zip tie these together because it matters where the teeth on the gears lay. So it just makes it really nice and easy to reinstall it again because I can just throw it on and I'll know that when this is all the way left, the bolt hole is gonna be all the way on the left here. So when it slides all the way here, the bolt holes is gonna be on the right. You want that full range of motion between the two cam gears. I am going to cover these washers and braking oil. I got some coolant on this o-ring to lube it up. There we go, and I'll tighten this one once the Vanos is fully on. So I need to catch you guys up with what happened. I was having a lot of issues with turning the secondary chain for the timing. And it was having a so much resistance and I couldn't do it by hand. I had to get the jack handle to move it by hand that is crazy i would should not use that much leverage to move this and i was suspecting that the three hardware store nuts were the problem so i had to wait the whole weekend that was on friday and now i got some oem bolts from fcp euro and these don't have a ridge under them and the nuts that i have have ridges under them so i'm thinking that these were applying more torque than they had to so i'm hoping changing those nuts out will give me the free flowing secondary chain So that is the type of nut that I was using. I should have known that those teeth would ruin the, <laughs> the reading of these nuts. It's all I had. It was a desperate attempt. So these are the new OEM nuts. They look way better than that other bullshit that I was trying to use. This is a new guide. I'm going to install this real quick. That's why I took the timing chain off. go I got a new one of these because I've always had it broken right here so might as well just change it because it is a wear item the chain does the ride right here and I didn't even realize that so got a new one I'm gonna make sure to put some assembly lube on the face where the chain rides on good to go The new guide is in now, so I can finish on. I have assembly lube on all the faces right here because before I had it dry and I thought that that was a really big resistance point, so I put some assembly lube on everything. Now I can just insert these bolts right here. I gotta leave these loose on the left and then tighten down the three on this side. After I tightened it down was when it started locking up and being very difficult to move. I'm hoping it's easy now. So now there's three spacers. The first one is a two millimeter spacer. This one's gonna go on first. And then the spring is gonna go with the concave side facing this way. And once that's sitting in there, the four millimeter washer is gonna go on top. I'm putting the wear side away because when I had the wear side in, there was a lot more resistance. So I'm just flipping it around and hoping for the best. Here we go, OEM nuts, please fix it. So I'm just evenly tightening that spring down and not just running one down. Fuck, I didn't put the dummy chain. Oh, but I haven't tightened this yet. Okay. The little trick to making your own dummy timing chain tensioner is to have a mechanical one with a spring. This one is a hydraulic one, so it wouldn't work since it's all one unit. But since this is two pieces like this, you take eight pennies, put it inside here, and then you just drop this right on top, and then that's your solid tensioner. 
There we go, that's solid. So I'm guessing this timing chain tensioner takes effect and has to be in when you tighten this left one because it moves this chain, but me tightening this one, I don't think is gonna affect it because it should be able to move freely, but let me just put this tensioner in. I'm only gonna do it by hand. I don't wanna put it too, too tight. Right there. There's a pretty good amount of resistance. It's not in all the way, but I don't want it to go in all the way. I just want it to get held in tight. Please have no resistance. Yes! Let's go! <laughs> yes! Let's fucking go! Yeah, that's how it should be. Not as hard as I was doing it before. I'll put a clip in here. This is how hard I had to do it. It's so hard to move, yo. Do I really need this extension? This is crazy. Dude, no way. The amount of torque that that takes. Yeah, I don't know, that feels horrible. Because I was thinking, yo, there's no way this Vanos is gonna have the power to turn that whole camshaft if I couldn't do it by hand. So I'm like, yo, this shit, if I, I have to be able to do it easily for this little ass Vanos to be able to move it. Let's go! Just with the condition of the nuts that came out, I can safely say that every time I'm gonna rebuild this engine, I'm gonna be putting brand new cam nuts on there because they get chewed up. So just get new ones. They're like 30 cents each. Get three. There's no reason why you shouldn't change these because that would have been bad if I continued it without those. I'm gonna put a little assembly lube on that guide right there. Yeah! This is final assembly. We could get nasty with it. And now I can do this. Oh, there we go. Piston is putting nice pressure on there. Now I can install the Vanos and then tighten these after the Vanos is installed. This Vanos seal can go on now. I'm gonna put it in dry because I don't know. I, that's just how BMW says to do it. But all of these always leak. So maybe they are wrong. I don't know. But I don't know, I want to try my attempt at putting everything in super clean. Like, if this leaks, then I know that I will need another way of installing it, but I need to at least try it one time, being super thorough. I gotta move this all the way to the right. There we go. It hits the wall on the right, and then I'm gonna have to move this chain to the left, and I need the vanos to grab on on the first movement. So if it doesn't grab on on the first movement, I gotta go back. I don't know if this piston has to be extended or not, but I'm gonna try with it not extended first. This needs to go on and grab on on the first tooth, so. so. There we go, I can feel that it's almost on right there, so let's see if that's gonna grab on first try. Yup, you saw how the Vanos got sucked in right when I moved the chain? Yeah, there we go. So it grabbed on first try, let's go! That shit just sucked it up, nigga. <laughs> saw how the first little bit of movement, it instantly grabbed it. Holy shit, it looks so good! <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Omar. He gave me the suggestion to paint my BMW logo. And it looks so good. I painted it with some paint pens, and it sticks out like crazy. Every single angle that I shoot it from, you can just see the BMW logo in your face. That's beautiful. Every 24 valve should have that painted. I'm gonna wash this hardware up in the parts washer. It's all covered in oil. Definitely not the best. I'm nowhere near pretty, but there's no oil on it. So that's all I can ask for. These nuts are all gonna go to 10 Newton meters. I can also tighten both of these as well. These two bigger 13 mil bolts are gonna go to 17 foot pounds. We're good to go, now I can tighten these and then I can put the real tensioner in. These bolts are gonna go to 15 Newton meters. There we go, now I can install the real tensioner. I also have a new crush washer on here. This is gonna get tightened to 70 Newton meters. The engine is officially timed. I just pried the washer off. Now I can put a new one on. Yeah, the other one was so crushed that it wouldn't even fit over the threads. And this one goes over very good. These are gonna go to 50 Newton meters. 
The engine is officially timed. <laughs> Let's go. And I feel good about it. That's the best part. I can take these covers out. I can install this Vanos line now. Here we go, all tight. I'm gonna put some braking oil all over everything. There we go, I got a pretty good amount of oil in there. Now I can put the valve cover on it and feel pretty good about it. You need to make sure that all of the valve cover surfaces are super clean, no oil on there, so that hopefully the gasket actually seals. I'm gonna use some Ultra Black RTV, put it just where the Vanos cover meets with the head. Oh, also I gotta put it in the back too. Relatively thin layer, not too, too much. All right, that should be good there. This cover looks absolutely insane because I put it in the parts washer, but it's clean now. It's all that I wanted. This cover goes over the intake cam to help stop oil from getting flung up and out the valve cover. Actually, I wanna put some oil in it before. It looks super dirty, but it's just stained plastic. I'm only putting some RTV in the half moons. Actually, I'm only gonna put them in the corner because I'm gonna have to take the valve cover off to retighten the head. So I'm only gonna do the corners for this first startup and the first drive and stuff. And then when I put the valve cover back in, I'll do the whole half moon. The valve cover gasket is now in. This is also actually because I used the parts washer to get all that thick, nasty grease out. And it worked, but it's just ugly for now. Tried holding the valve cover in as many places as possible. Now I'm gonna go around, since I have the luxury, go around and make sure that the gasket is fully sat. Yep, we're good to go. All cleaned up, you know the deal, no more oil. These are ready for install and these are gonna go to 10 newton meters as well. Now I gotta very evenly tighten all the bolts and be very slow with it because this valve cover was already cracking a little bit along the outside so I gotta be very gentle to bring the whole cover down together. I'm gonna go back and make sure I tighten all of them. And just like that, I'm calling this movie a wrap. Finally, after like a month of work. This is taking so long, but here's the show for it. <laughs> I think it came out so good. And honestly, I feel very confident that this is gonna work and it's gonna be a very fun setup in my car. So you guys know the deal. If you enjoyed this video and if you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate you so much. Leave a like and make sure you're subscribed. If you made it through this long of a video and you're not subscribed, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but follow me on Instagram right here at E30Joel to stay up to date with everything that I'm doing. Yeah, thank you for watching. If you stay till the very end, you can see this magical treat. Oh my fucking. If you stay till the end, you get to see this beautiful treat. This thing is gonna look so good in the engine bay of my E30. I can't wait, I can't wait. Stay tuned, you guys know the deal.